All right, welcome everybody. We uh, haven't done a video in a long time because we continuously work uh, uh, on a daily basis in this grind that we call the, the market in our live trading room. Uh, and uh, I just thought I'd uh, give you a couple of things that I think are important for this week and this month, July, as we get into earnings season. Uh, you can take a few minutes and put pause on the button if you'd like to read our uh, comments starting off uh, this week uh, right in here. Uh, so, uh, for example, we talked about uh, Goldman Sachs Bank America, um, also GDXJ, EQR, we're in uh, equity residential, EQR, we're in that, we're long, Johnson & Johnson. Um, I've got a breakout line in the sand on CVX, I'm not hopeful on it, but we were long stocks, we got out of the stocks, and we rolled out of stock and bought some near-term call options for the upside. CVX is not going to work out. We bought a 65-cent option. It was dumber and dirt. Uh, it's a 110 strike. Expires this Friday. Now, I've seen stranger things happen, but um, I, I don't know if we're going to get a $6.50 move in CVX out of nowhere. Despite the fact that crude is strong, one of the other things that we talked about in our live trading community is we go all the way out looking at the front month futures, which is at 74 right now. We go out to... Uh, the September contract at 73 and a half. And then if you look out the curve all the way to May of 22, crude oil is still trading at $67 a barrel. So why aren't these companies making money? They are. They're making hand over fist. And I think this earnings season, you're going to see that. So MRO, uh, I think we got an August call option there. And I think if we can break out above these lines. Now, what are these lines? Most of this stuff is person's pivot analysis, which is available. And again, this is think or swim. So this is just basically the weekly pivot blue, and this is the daily pivot pink. When the markets tend to be bullish, uh, prices tend to stay above pivot levels. When price, prices are bearish, they tend to stay below the pivot line in the sand. So that gives us more of an indication if there's a turn coming, and many people don't realize what the person's pivot indicator was about. It was an indicator to help us detect in a futuristic, a leading indicator method what the dynamics of the market is. Is it bullish or bearish? If bullish, stay be long. So for in the case of this morning, for example, we've got the Russell, which has been beaten up pretty badly, not going anywhere, beaten up badly in the sense that the Russell, the Qs, the Spy, the Diamond are all up around 14 to 16. They're all rough, roughly around 15% year to date. As they converged up on their, their, their point of values uh, on a year to date date basis percentage wise bottom line is this has been a massive sector rotation market on steroids with large cap mega cap names like microsoft over here apple google facebook uh all leading the, the charge all right without getting into much more ado about that this red line in the sand in microsoft by the way we were looking at a bare unweighted butterfly to the downside and uh, we actually bought it on uh, Tuesday last week, and we got out Friday. We made 20 cents on this strategy. The reason I got out is because the market needed to break. And I said, three times the charm, man. If we can't get, break that line of sand, just get out of the trade. We did for a 20-cent profit. I'm embarrassed about it. But the point is, is that if the markets don't move in a prescribed period of time, we just get out. And that's directional trading with options. As far as trading non-directional with options, uh, let's talk about what we've got going on. Right now, we've got earnings coming out with banks. Um, they're not only looking for maybe a 4%, 3.5% to 4% move in city this week. In fact, every single bank, Morgan, uh, that's uh, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, both of them, by the way, Wells Fargo City, they're all anywhere between 3 to 4 maybe 5% moves, which the implied volatility is below the 52-week historic. So there's no volatility priced in the market. There's no surprises anyone's expecting, and that's where we could see a surprise. We noted that today, I said, listen, if you guys want to do something that's unique, because Citi has had a huge sell-off uh, from its highs. It was around 80 bucks, got to 66 the other day. You know, if you want to trade something that'll get you into Jackson Hole, Wyoming, uh, it'll get you past the FOMC meeting in two weeks. Um, you know, maybe go with a August expiration, monthly August expiration, and that's what we wrote up on City for today, just to share that with you. And it's right over here. We got several ideas that we came up with today. Um, you can look at the uh, 
70 80 strike august 20th expiration and if you take a moment you could read that and this is the kind of stuff that we put out uh it's right here city um for a buck double nickel uh you know it's kind of behaving bullishly to a degree volumes kind of spiking up a little bit i mean you know is it going to happen on this earnings cycle i don't know but it, it may see some upside relief rally that there's no bad news coming out. So that was City. That's one trade we came up with this morning. Uh, the other was to buy IWM and risk the low of today, um, you know, into these little shadows that we have here with an at the money 226. They were going for about two, 205, 210 uh, in that range. And if the market does break up, we're only looking for a move up to 229, 230. So that's for the weekly on uh, the Russell. If this market is a rotational grind, Russell might see some upside. And where would it come from? Strength on banks, regional banks, not just city, but again, Truist Financial has earnings this week. And uh, that's where we might see some upside. We might also see some upside in some of the smaller cap energy names in the Russell. So the Russell relative to its past performance usually the russell could be up like 20 percent 30 percent and the s p's could be up 10 12 15 percent so the dow the russell everything's up about the same the russell's been down two weeks in a row people don't realize that let's take a look all right so this is the weekly newsletter we put out uh, spy up 16 percent the nasdaq up 15 percent okay well one and a half percent difference the dow up 14 and the russell 15 and a half but Last week it was down. It was the only index down on the week. Um, in the seasonal, the month of July, you know, generally speaking, we have um, stock indices uh, all tend to show strength in the first half of the month and then tend to show end of month weakness. I just want that to be known. Uh, so we're kind of getting into that point where we had a huge ass run in the market and now we got that seasonal event that might take place. Bullish. Wow. Large banks, institution, and conglomerate banks, uh, regional banks. So these are the, the, the type of seasonalities that make kind of sense that we might see recovery. And small cap might, might add to that with maybe some transports in there and maybe the airlines get a little bit of recovery and some of these regional banks right there, as I was just saying. So with that said, it, it's not that far cry to look at maybe upside out of city and a little upside recovery dead kit bounce out of the Russell. Anyway, um, you can take a moment to read and pause the video and read some of the stuff that we put out for this week. Uh, this is just some add-ons that we're looking. We bought half positions already and we're adding to these. Uh, so that's where it says add. So basically we last week we bought in a little bit nibbled in with some Kimberly Clark equity residential which is doing okay for us TJ Maxx gold miners um, and then we entered an exit as I was mentioning that bear put spread in Microsoft we were long Palantir at around 22 we trailed our stop and they knocked us out so that's okay that shows our current positions this shows what's happening this week and it's ironic that all of the bank stocks it's like what bankers don't want to work after 12 o'clock it's like bankers hours right and true to form all the earnings on the banks are first thing in the morning it's like okay earnings trade and let's go off to the country club to the to the uh golf course uh, uh you know uh and it seems that that's what we're starting with this week's earnings it's summertime uh let's have fun in the afternoon um uh, bottom line is we've just got very few positions on to, to engage risk going forward for this maybe change of guard. Uh, this year we've had pretty good uh, stroke of a lot of trades. Green are, are winners, red are losers. You know, this was junior miners. It was a carryover from the prior year. Um, we're getting back in. By the way, we bought the stock uh, last year around 41. We just, uh, for fair and transparency, this is where it ended uh, on Dece 31st. So instead of saying, hey, if you take credit for where your open trade equity was at the end of the year, you can't carry over your trade equity, um, you know, from your entry after that point. So anyway, from the end of the year, it's a loss, but the overall trade was a winner. But the bottom line is this is all our longs and that's what we got going on for equities right now. So that mirrors what we're watching in our main trade room. EQR, equity residential, uh, Johnson & Johnson long, uh, and then again, uh, I'm looking for Kimberly Clark. If it gets back above that green line, that's a breakout point above pivot, daily pivot, weekly pivot. We need to see structural strength going over the market. All right. And I like Kimberly Clark longer term. So that's why we're, we're dealing with that. 
Green is a buy, red's a sell. If we get Microsoft and it starts to dribble and gets a 60 minute close underneath that strong, that layer of support, then we'll probably look to re-enter those bear unweighted flies. What is a bear fly unweighted? We were long the 270 strike put, we were short two of the 260s, uh, so it's a ratio, and then we were long one of the 255. So in case the stock really cratered, something bad happened, Microsoft did something bad, or maybe just an overall sell off the market, we were only looking for a pullback down to like 270, and that was, I thought, a, a really good trade for the August expiration. When it didn't make any move headway, we got out of the trade. Uh, market was just too fuerte. This is our uh, algo room. We've got two rooms running at the same time. Um, bottom line, when we run these rooms, uh, we, we let everything that we cover in our weekly videos is recorded. So when we do our morning uh, session, everything here like Roblox, it's breaking out on a daily close above 94. You gotta get long, it's a wedge pattern if you're not already long. Um, and it measures a, a t measuring technique is up to 125, 130. Meanwhile, we have all of these wonderful strategies running in the other trading room. When people have a, a, a chance to listen to me here or go over there, but bottom line is um, we've got, let's see, the GBTC model is long right now. Uh, performance this year, I mean, if you think about it, it's done okay, but it hasn't generated any new trades for a, or, or new profit. Green dot means it's a new equity high. Um, it hasn't really done anything because, quite frankly, it keeps getting a oh, gap lower, gap higher. It, it gets out at nice trades, gets short, gets stopped out on a trailing stop basis, gets long, gets stopped out, and it gets long, and it's just sitting here doing nothing sideways in Bitcoin. Right now, it has a current long position, and it's losing $225. You can see everything right there marked to market. The five-minute E-mini S&P model is over here. You can see the entry. This is all happening live in front of everybody. Uh, current models in the SPY as well as the SPXL. Both models are pretty decent. Decent meaning here's the equity curve, and we just left a new equity curve high uh, on the SPY model. But quite frankly, it's not, it's not in a long position right now. And I'm all right with that because, quite frankly, if you look at the, the, the relationship between SPY making a new high, the VXX is not making a new low. And the VXX is a volatility ETF. And by the way, here's our performance there. We just hit a new equity high and it's not doing much because, well, gee, it's not doing much. So you can't get blood out of a, out of a stone, they kind of say. SQQ is an inverse ETF. I mean, we take longs and shorts. So when the SQQ goes down, it means the NASDAQ's going up. And we're almost at another new equity high. We haven't done anything with this um, as far as new equity high. Uh, in the market because, well, quite frankly, on a 15-minute basis with the SQQ, uh, it really hasn't really gone up that much in the last two weeks. So uh, I know that sounds weird, but the Qs keep bouncing higher, trading lower, bouncing higher, trading lower uh, in the, this week and last week. I just wanted to give you a quick review because this is going to be an interesting um, way of looking at the markets in the next couple weeks with earnings season and how a lot of these high multiple names and low multiples, the lowest multiple sector in the market is the financial, the banks. No one wants to buy low multiple, PE meaning nine in city in Citigroup's uh, uh, case. The, the price to earning ratio is nine. In the case of Chipotle Mexican Grill, it's like, I don't know, 100 or something. But so the bottom line is high multiple stocks, is that, that's the momentum. That's where everyone wants to be, the fast money. And that could change. And again, what else could change? Beige book this week, earnings for bank this week, guidance going forward, new executive orders, things of tighter regulatory restrictions, higher wage costs uh, increasing. These are a lot of considerations that we have. What we're doing in a live trading room is kind of just keeping with the market tone of the rotation theme. And I thought that for doing a YouTube video, you probably want to watch what is the most dynamic indicator uh, to pay close attention to. And when it comes to the S&P 500 and the major indices, it's this right here, advanced decline. Today's market is up like a quarter percent and the advanced decline is eh, bullish neutral. 272 out of 500 stocks, it's just right there. So on the close today, if we can't get a strong concentration or if that breadth of the advancers versus decliners starts to show more relative weakness, um, you know, we're coming to a short-term pause in this market. 
I'm not saying a major crash, but boy, that I just shared with you the newsletter and the seasonality of the market. I don't want to be long exposed to stocks that show weakness year after year, especially with high multiples, when we have a Federal Reserve that could be talking about talking about uh, tightening down the road. I'll stay more in touch with YouTube videos. If you want to find out a little bit more about our live trading room and or you don't have time because you have a real job, that's great. I'm, and, and, and I respect that a lot, man. Um, here's the thing. We're going to do a pug meeting and go over the person's, what is pug meeting? It's a person's user group and we go over the indicators that are available on the various platforms, whether it's HGSI, Thinkorswim, Trade Navigator, and uh, again, Trade Station. And we do that as a, a once a month customer appreciation. It's a free event. You can probably get a lot more information out of that on how the person indicators work. And more importantly, a little bit of uh, guidance as to what the uh, indicators show. With that said, I wish you well and I hope you have had a good summer so far. And I'll see you at our pug meeting this Wednesday. And again, uh, you can see if you can't make it, we will send an email invite out to people uh, for the recorded video. Thanks for watching. I hope this uh, helped you out.